Alrighty guys, I hope you're ready for another jam-packed week for the stock market. We're going to have our hands full yet again, which means this video today is going to be a jam-packed video. We have a lot to break down, 10 companies in particular, all of which are reporting earnings this week. We'll break down the charts, what I'm looking to do, all that good stuff. But before we do that, guys, if you all find value, all I ask is to hit that like button and to subscribe. We're 100 subscribers away from 30,000 subs. I appreciate each and every one of you guys for tuning in, for watching, all the support. It really means a lot to me. Cheers to that, guys. And uh, I guess with that being said, let's dive right into the video. We have a lot to break down. Again, 10 stocks in this video. Let's just dive right into it. The first one that I want to get into, guys, is Rumble, which is actually a competitor to YouTube. Well, really, it's not much of a competition right now, uh, considering Rumble's projected to do only $18 million of revenue for the quarter. Uh, but it is an alternative platform. Maybe not so much, you know, huge competition right now, but it is an up and coming platform that's going against uh, YouTube, right? They have a lot of creators on there, some of them that have been banned off of YouTube. Uh, they have exclusive deals on Rumble, and they're doing pretty well. A lot of creators are doing pretty well on Rumble. And again, they're an up and coming platform that's looking to do revenue for this quarter of $18.15 million, And that's not a lot by any means, but they're growing. Growing massively. Last year they did $4.4 million. That's going to be up over 300% year over year and they're going to lose money of course uh, about eight cents projected right now uh, they're going to lose eight cents eps which makes sense i mean they're not trying to be profitable they're looking to reinvest uh you know sign more creators start building out you know their brand get more people on the actual platform to make content right i actually tried making content well not making exclusive content on rumble but i just re-uploaded these videos onto rumble i tested it for about a month two months and i'll be honest guys nothing really Really happened to my page guys I'm not gonna lie I got like three views or I would get like one two three four views per video so for finance maybe stocks it's not the best right now and I heard that you have to live stream on rumble to really gain an audience which I did not do that on rumble uh, so I mean I don't know for for my perspective for my experience you know rumble wasn't that great for uh, for me at least for, for the month or two months that I tested it but overall it doesn't matter they're still an up-and-coming business that is crushing it year over year on revenue and uh, we'll see how the stock ends up doing right now the stock's at eight dollars and 20 cents it is in a little downtrend we were at 11 bucks uh back in when was that the middle of june now we're at 820 so we are down percentage wise about 27 percent heading into earnings and mind you earnings are on i believe monday uh let's see monday after the bell so tomorrow or today depending on when you're watching this video it's, uh, you know, th this company set to report and we're going to see whether we break out. Maybe we start pushing past the moving averages. Let's say this thing starts going above $9 again. We break the 180 SMA on this four hour chart. It's going to take off to the upside, especially if earnings come in better than expected. Revenue, guidance, EPS, all that good stuff. We're going to start breaking out, in my opinion. Uh, so I just put my alert at 9 bucks. But if we do fail to break out of this 50 SMA at 8.30, we start dumping back under 8 bucks, guys. Oof, it's not going to look good on the downside, in my opinion. Let's see here. The next one is Home Depot, which is ticker symbol HD. I believe they're on Tuesday after the bell. And it looks like this one is starting to break out. I'm not sure when I did this prior analysis here, but it looks like if I pull up maybe the one-year chart, uh, actually, no, maybe the three-year chart. Looks like we outlined a wedge. This was probably a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month, two months ago. I forget uh, when I drew this. But either way, it looks like we are starting to break out of the wedge. We're above the moving averages on this three-year chart. You guys can see on the four-hour chart as well. We're uh, clearly starting to reverse. Really, ever since last earnings, last time Home Depot reported was back in the middle of May. And heading into last earnings, Home Depot was actually declining, doing not the best, right? And ever since they reported last time, the, the past three months have been really strong. Home Depot's gone from about 285, 290. Now we're pushing 330, heading into this report where they're looking to do EPS of 406 versus the five dollar and five cent from last year so eps will be declining and revenue will also be declining a little bit nothing crazy they're looking to do 42.24 billion versus 43.79 billion so uh, you know it is a little bit 
uh, under the project or uh, under what it was last year projected, right? Uh, which would be down 3.5%, but it's not the end of the world. And maybe, well, not maybe, the stock definitely knows this. It's priced in, and clearly it doesn't give a crap about it, right? Now, if we get a curveball, something out of left field on Tuesday after the bell, or is it in the morning? Uh, it might be in the morning, actually. Yeah, 15th in the morning. That's on Tuesday morning. Uh, if we get something out of left field, maybe they miss revenue or EPS is awful, uh, maybe guidance sucks. I don't know. Uh, this could easily gap down. We could actually see this go down lower 300s in my opinion, which honestly, that could be an opportunity on Home Depot. The next one here, guys, which we actually have not talked about on the channel, but I've actually consumed a lot of their product. Maybe you have as well. Let me know in the comments. It is Kava, guys. Ticker symbol C-A-V-A. Good, uh, Very good ticker symbol there if you ask me guys for this company. So they went public back in the middle of June, and I'm not going to talk about their valuation or how much money they're making or not making, uh, their top line, anything like that. We're not going to break down the numbers today. We're going to talk about really the charts here. Uh, but this is one that just went public, and you guys know how that goes. When companies go public, when they IPO or they do a uh, direct listing, whatever they do, it's really volatile, right? Typically, stocks during that time period are very volatile, and this one's done quite well. We IPO'd or direct, I, I don't know exactly, did it IPO, this, that, whatever. Uh, we'll look at the details maybe in another video, but it came onto the market in the low mid 40s, it looks like, and now we're in the high 40s, but just about a week ago, uh, maybe two, 10 days ago, Ago, whatever two weeks ago uh, we were at $58 so we're actually down 10 bucks heading into earnings so about 17 18 percent here on Kava which earnings are on the 15th Tuesday after the bell so they're looking to do revenue of 163 million dollars on EPS of negative two cents so they're going to lose money um, and who knows I mean this is really a wild card at this point they just came to the markets freshly uh, you know publicly traded company right and we'll see. I mean, I know their food's great. I know they're crushing it in terms of opening new locations. They have a great, uh, you know, food, food menu, in my opinion. And, and if you guys didn't know, they're uh, kind of a fast. They're kind of like the Chipotle, I'd say, of uh, Mediterranean food. You know, they have uh, they got some Greek stuff, right? They have some, you know, a, a bunch of stuff, lamb, you know, chicken. They have. Uh, just a bunch of great stuff there. Feta, you know, tzatziki, different types of hummuses, right? Rice, you know, lentil, stuff like that. The food's great. I mean, I've been there a bunch of times, but that doesn't mean the stock necessarily is going to perform well or the, uh, you know, the financials are going to crush it. So we'll see again. It's kind of like a wild card at this point. You know, you know, we'll, we'll see how the earnings come out. It looks like actually this is the first earnings report for the company as a publicly traded company, guys. Uh, so get ready. Ready. I'm actually pumped. Maybe I'll make a video on that heading into it. And, I, and I'm not in the stock, full disclosure. I'm not buying it. I don't plan on buying it. The food's great. I'm, I'm not saying it's a bad stock, uh, but it's kind of like a wait and, and see, wait and approach type of uh, uh, you know situation right now for me with Kava stock. And the next one is Target, TGT, which I think they're on Wednesday. Uh, let's see here. They're set to report on the 16th in the morning, so that's Wednesday. They're looking to do EPS of a dollar 43 versus 39 cents uh, from last year. Revenue 25.3 billion dollars versus 26.04 billion from last year. That's looking to be down 2.8 percent year over year. And of course, there's a lot going on with Target right now, guys. Uh, you know, we we had some uh, some stuff go on a couple of months ago, which we're not going to get into in this video. Uh, but that ended up causing, well, uh, the stock to get destroyed. I mean, you guys probably remember that. That was, uh, when was that? In May, June, whatever. Uh, and a lot of people are speculating their sales are going to come in bad or uh, very low, right, because of this. And we'll see. I mean, who knows? Again, they're projected at $25.3 billion. It might be worse than that. And this is looking like a descending triangle right now uh, heading into these earnings. So that's not the most bullish pattern. In fact, that is very bearish. Keep that in mind here on Target. Cisco is the next one. CSCO is the ticker. They're set to report on, it looks like here, let me see, on 
uh, Wednesday after the bell, and this one's doing very well. In fact, it is at a fresh high on the four-hour chart heading into earnings. They're looking to do a dollar six EPS versus eighty-three cents from last year, and revenues looking to come in at fifteen point oh five billion versus thirteen point one billion from last year, up over fifteen or right around fifteen percent year over year. And look at this, guys. This stock's actually really starting. Well, not fully. Well, don't get me wrong. It's been uptrending. It's breaking now for sure but now we're starting to take out the highs from a couple of months ago being about 53 bucks and from about two weeks ago from the end of july being about 53 54 bucks if we really start breaking mid 50s guys this could start taking off in my opinion and we're not even anywhere near all-time highs yeah 65 is the all-time high looks like from 2022 or is it let me double check that actually no 82 bucks from the tech bubble guys was the all-time high and cisco's not even anywhere near that yet crazy how that works let's see here folks the next one is walmart and by the way if you're uh, if you're still watching the video you're finding value i appreciate you guys for uh, for sticking on throughout hit that like button if you haven't done so already Ready. And don't forget to subscribe. We're almost at 30,000 subs. We're a hair away. I appreciate you all, as always, for tuning in, you know, subscribing, uh, you know, just, just supporting over the years. You guys are great. So Walmart is actually at a fresh high on the four hour chart as well, just like Cisco heading into these earnings. They're looking to do a dollar sixty nine EPS versus a dollar seventy seven from last year. So that's down a bit from last year projected. But sales on the flip side are going to be up about seven billion dollars, right? One hundred fifty nine point nine three billion is the estimate for the quarter versus one hundred fifty two point eight six billion from last year, up four point six percent year over year year and again this looks like it is starting to break out well it's been up trending all uh you know all, all year pretty much uh but now it looks like this triangle that we were in is starting to play out you guys see this which could lead to a lot more upside on walmart we'll see how the earnings look when they actually come out guys i believe they're on thursday or are they on wednesday thursday morning yep 17th is thursday morning watch out for them and before we continue on guys make sure you get up to 16 free stocks for moomoo who's the sponsor of today's video all you have to do is go down below or just simply go to stocksurfast.com slash moomoo once you open up your account and funnel with at least 100 bucks you get five stocks right off the bat and if you fund your account at least a thousand dollars you get 10 more stocks totaling 15 stocks and listen to this guys fund your account at least five thousand dollars for a limited time on top of those 15 stocks you also get a free share of either tesla stock or expedia stock which makes this promo a no-brainer so get on it guys use that link down below and of course that is an affiliate link i appreciate you all as always and with that being said cheers let's talk about the four stocks left applied materials folks let's pull it up amat this is another one that well you guessed it is reporting earnings this week they're set to report i believe on the 18th no 17th which is on thursday after the bell and this one's actually taking a beating heading into this upcoming week the stock was at 153 back in the beginning of this month and now it's at 138 as of friday's close which is a drop of around nine and a half percent from the recent highs and if you guys look here on the four hour chart you all can see we're holding this channel right we're clearly still up trending on AMAT and honestly we could have a little bit more downside maybe to 130 135 uh we'll see we'll see they're looking to do EPS of a dollar 74 versus a dollar 94 from I believe last year yeah revenue is looking to come in at 6.16 billion versus 6.52 billion from last year that's going to be down 5.5 percent year over year so this is actually decent I mean we're pretty oversold almost in correction territory heading into earnings week and mind you they're later in the week they're on Thursday so Monday Tuesday Wednesday three days where we could get some crazy price action on applied materials in anticipation of earnings I'm going to be watching it. They're going to be on my watch list for sure, which is why we're covering them here in this video. The next one is John Deere, which I believe they're on, or uh, Deere and Company, uh, whatever you want to call it. I believe they're on Friday. And talk about a reversal, guys. Hindsight's 2020, of course, but I wish I bought uh, the stock back when it was, what, 350, 60, 70. During this uh, you know, little downtrend, 
trend well, more than just a little downtrend. I mean, geez, guys, this thing was downtrending for months. Uh, but since that point, it's broken out, and now we're getting a V-shaped recovery on Deer and Company. And they're set to report again on the 18th, which I believe is it's the 18th, right? Yeah, the 18th in the morning, they're set to report. So they're looking to do EPS of 819 versus 616 last year. That is insane. And revenue is looking to come in at $14.24 billion versus $13 billion from last year. That's going to be up around 9.5%, almost 10% uh, year over year. Not bad. But the thing is, this stock is up almost $100 in the past two months, which is a little bit worrisome. Up 25% heading into these earnings. A little bit worrisome, guys. This, this could be pricing in all the green. Who knows? Maybe the, the earnings have to be pristine for this to go up even more. That's kind of what I'm suspecting at this point. So for that reason, I'm being a little bit cautious with Deer and Company. And the next one here is EL, which is Estee Lauder. This one's been destroyed. I mean, look, this was back at uh, back in rather the beginning of February. It was at 285. Now we're under 170 bucks per share. So this stock is down 40%. I'm not sure what's going on under the hood fundamentally with Estee Lauder, uh, but clearly it's not looking good. Something bad is going on with this company for this thing to go down 40%. When the S&P 500, mind you, this is down 40% year to date. The S&P 500 year to date is up massively. I mean, we're talking, let's see here, S&P roughly is up around 18, 17% year to date. And for Estee Lauder to be down 40%, on a year like this or any year like this, right? There's got to be some some bad crap going on there, uh, which I don't know exactly what's going on. But look, they're looking to lose three cents on the on the uh, quarter per share versus last year's forty two cent profit. So they're actually uh, declining massively. Their their losses are narrowing or not narrowing, widening, which is not what you want to see uh, massively year over year. And when it comes to revenue, they're pretty much flat. $3.5 billion is projected for the quarter versus $3.56 billion from last year, guys. Down 1.9, almost 2% year over year. So we'll see. Maybe a miracle comes uh, and, you know, saves uh, uh, Estee Lauder. I don't know. Maybe it starts breaking out. But as of now, guys, this thing is downtrending and there's no reversal in sight. And the last stock for the video is good old XP. EV, which is another Chinese electric vehicle company, and this stock is down big time, seven eight bucks from uh, from a couple of days ago, really about two weeks ago, uh, down thirty percent heading into the earnings, which is pretty intense. And now we're right around the one eighty SMA, which has held that support over the past couple of months. Uh, so Xpeng right now is on. Let me see what they are they reporting. They're reporting on the eighteenth, which is on Friday in the morning. So they're looking to do EPS of negative thirty. 31 cents, so they're going to lose money versus the loss of 43 cents last year. So their loss is narrowing. That's good. And revenue on the flip side is not looking good, guys. Holy smoke. $694 million is the projection. Not bad, right? But when you look at what they did last year, you're like, holy crap, that is bad. Last year they lost, or not lost, <laughs> they did $1.03 billion in revenue. So we're looking uh, to see a decline of 300 something million year over year. That's going to be down 32% percent uh year over year for xpeng not good not good at all not a good sign for this company and maybe that's being priced in i mean we we obviously already know that xpeng the shareholders investors which full disclosure i don't own the stock but everybody that does own it i'm assuming knows year over year it's not going to be looking good maybe that's priced in uh, on this pullback, or maybe that was already priced in a couple months ago. I don't know. Uh, but look, this thing's pulling back. We're right around the 180 SMA, pretty oversold. Even though the earnings or the revenue is going to suck, it's already known, guys. We already know that. Uh, so we'll see if anything unknown comes out. Maybe that could cause some spike. Uh, and that's where we can make money. We'll see. Uh, but with that being said, I'm going to wrap up the video. Pretty long video today, guys. If you enjoyed it and stuck till the end, let me know in the comments. Say, uh, I don't know, maybe say stuck till the end or till the end. I appreciate everybody that did stick till the end. Hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe. Don't forget to get your free money for Moomoo as well. And to check out my Patreon. If you guys want to be a part of the Patreon portfolio, watch me build that. You get full, you know, full screenshots, full transparency of all the moves I make every single week. Week, and we've been growing that pretty nicely throughout the past couple of months here. If you guys want to join the Patreon, we opened up some new spots. Link down below. Check it out. And with that being said, cheers. I'll see you guys later.